Hello, Dave. Could I just ask everybody to settle into their seats? Because um, we just have some final last arrangements to do. Uh, thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you very much everyone. That first song was entitled Ashling, written by the Irish composer Michael McGlynn. And for the Gwelgors out there, you'll know that Ashling is the Irish word for dream, which is what this strategic plan is about. The next piece we're going to perform is an American spiritual called Hold On to the Plough, which is about sticking through with things right to the end. In this case, making it to the promised land. I'm 
Uh, good afternoon, Secretary General, distinguished guests, colleagues, students and friends of Maynooth University. It's my great pleasure to welcome you all here today and I'd like to also welcome everybody joining us online. Kurum Fal Jamur, Riv Gakay Nyata, Ling and Yov, Erlina Nuan Shah Ilahar, it's La Anna Hach the Kaishad and Old School, the winter and the whole school. August Fresh and Don Fobel Levine, a cadre of Agasig Playling. I just want to start by uh, thanking the uh, um, Minute University Chairman Corps for that uh, remarkable opening. Um, if you're talking about excellence and impact, I think that's what you're, you're seeing straight away. Uh, under the direction of Michael uh, T. Dawson, the choir has won several international choral competitions, including the Choir of the World competition in Wales in 2014, and auditioned members of the choir become ambassadors for the university through uh, national and international engagements, including tours all over the world and I want to thank them for, for that uh, performance. Uh, it's Misha uh, Sean O'Rean, O'Rean the from the Department of Sociology and the Centre for the Study of Politics. Uh, my role is to kind of keep things moving. Um, this will be the most I'll speak in the whole event. Um, I normally teach in this room right at this time, uh, so apologies in, if, in advance if I glare at people whose attention wanders in the back or <laughs> suggest some random group work. Um, I also want to start, I suppose, by recognising the, the protest outside, uh, which is raising very significant issues uh, that are, exist for postgrad students uh, as researchers, as uh, workers, as teachers uh, in this university and the system as a whole. And no doubt uh, many of the issues raised and discussed today will, will relate to, um, to those issues and how they might be addressed. Um, but for now, I'll just go ahead with some uh, the normal housekeeping items. Uh, as you can see, today's event is being recorded for promotional and archival purposes. Photographs and recordings made are likely to appear on the website, social media, print marketing, this is kind of the terms and conditions and supply part, <laughs> university publications, and may be used by third parties and external media outlets. Uh, if you prefer not to be featured, uh, just please let the photographer and videographer know. And also in terms of health and safety, in the event of a fire alarm sounding, there's two exits over here and two at the back. Um, and it, when you exit the building, uh, in the unlikely event of something like that happening, uh, please go to the nearest assembly point, which is located be, uh, beside car park 14 at the side of the building. 
So went to the uh, events of the day, and uh, one thing you might have might notice or might want to take uh, notice of is the uh, exhibition of Spur um, presentations, which is upstairs at the at the back there. I guess Anya thought Timpal na hoche le Dani, taking shift and finding the guys and Spur the hagan on a mic lane and shot. It's untuk ida echo la rasher in campus. It's fader echo when he's no mic lane and shot in lane. I guess talking to Spur the guys finding. Doing a Thai Gubber and show fresh. Uh, it's wonderful to see so many students back on campus and to feel the energy from them this year. And our wonderfully diverse students are, of course, the heart of the university. And uh, if you want to take a look at that summer program for undergrad research, you'll find presentations there on all kinds of topics from poets to sugar sensors, from bogs to chat GPT. Uh, but it'll, and it'll still be there after the, uh, uh, after the events and it's presented here as part of the research week, an important part of the research week. So, co-gordigus live us in Ober, Uh We're here today to launch, uh, officially launch our five-year uh, strategic plan from Maynooth University, and your presence today, either here or many people online, underscores the significance of the event, and we appreciate your participation. Guru Mila Magriff. Uh, Maynooth University is very proud of the plan. It was developed based on very extensive input and ideas from so many people that are here today. Uh, and we're very grateful for the time and expertise contributed by the university community. The plan builds on our history and strengths and seeks to continue to develop them as a university of excellence, opportunity and impact. Uh, at a time of many challenges, both locally and globally, I have to say it is wonderful to see Maynooth University commit itself to such a, an ambitious and noble overall purpose of the plan, which is to imagine and create better futures for all. Uh, that's not an easy task, as we see around us, but uh, it is one, that, uh, is, is one that we have to commit ourselves to as universities. Uh, everyone will receive a copy of the strategic plan on the way out. You will be checked later for your knowledge. <laughs> Okay, so uh, without any further ado, um, I will start by welcoming uh, our new Secretary General of the Department of Further and Higher Education, Research, Innovation and Science, and uh, to say a few words, I'm delighted to welcome Dr. Colm O'Reardon. Thank you, Colm. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, Thanks for the invitation to be here today and to be part of the launch of New the University's strategic plan. It's a great pleasure to be here with Dr. Canning, with the president, with the student representatives, and virtually with uh, a very old friend of mine and indeed my former boss, um, Ambassador Byrne Nation, Nason, who is, uh, I believe, a graduate of the college and certainly one of the finest public servants you could ever hope to meet. Um, my job is really just to first and foremost congratulate the university and everyone who was involved in developing what is an ambitious and forward-looking document and just to wish you every success in driving forward its implementation. I think when you walk around a campus that is as beautiful as Maynooth, you can't but be struck by a contrast and that is between the historic, perhaps secluded, monastic, cloistered nature of uh, historical origins of this and so many other universities, and the reality of what it is to be a modern university like Maynooth. An ivory certainly looks well on ancient towers, and there's much to be said for having that space to think and to be objective. Uh, but the modern university and this university is anything but the stereotypical ivory tower. It is a fully engaged, citizen of its region, of its country, and indeed of the world. And that reality comes through very clearly in your statement of strategy. And uh, I'm glad to see that reading is going to be compulsory. Um, I certainly encourage it. And can I encourage you, when you read the document, to spend a little bit of time with the bits at the beginning, which often we skip when we read strategy documents. And that's the bit at the beginning which refers to vision, to purpose, and to values. And having written quite a few strategy documents myself in my time, 
those are the bits which you kind of think, well, it's self-explanatory what our values are, explanatory what our, what our purpose is. But sometimes when you're faced with the blank page or the blank screen, it's actually harder to do than you might think. And yet, particularly in that space, if you haven't got it written, you haven't got it right. So I would say the statement of purpose in particular is a very elegant and eloquent and powerful statement of what the university is seeking to achieve and which encompasses the great ambition of this university and of every modern university that claims that, that, claims that title. Um, so much of the value in a strategy document lies in the engagement and the discussion that goes into it and in the department we are certainly pleased to have been part of that process and we are appreciative too of the way in which the document takes account of a number of national strategies uh, that pertain to this sector. And indeed, the emphasis in the strategy on internationalization chimes with our own policy in this space, which the government is discussing today or discussed this morning and which will be published um, in due course. So the document as a whole is a very powerful statement of intent and it's ambitious. And as a country, we need you to be ambitious because our economy grows when skilled people develop new technologies and apply them. Our society progresses when people challenge old ways of thinking and bring evidence and data to bear on social problems. And of course, the great, the great problems of our time, the great climate challenge, which is mentioned in the strategy, will only be addressed when science is brought to bear and applied uh, to, the, to the great challenge that we face. So congratulations on the document, congratulations on the amb ambition, and we wish you every success in its implementation, and we hope to work with you as you move forward as an institution. Thanks very much. Thank you, Secretary General. Uh, next, I'm pleased to welcome uh, Dr. Mary Canning, who is the chairperson of Maynooth University Governing Authority. And Mary will provide an overview of the process of developing the strategic plan, which involves so many uh, of you here today. Thank you, Mary. Thank you very much, Sean. Uh, good afternoon, Secretary General. President, distinguished guests, academic colleagues, friends. Uh, today we present the strategic plan for Maynooth University for the next five years. And I really would like to just comment on two uh, key things before handing over to the President. Firstly, I would like to talk to you about the process of developing the plan and that we all know lies in the value of the process and not the journey and not just the end itself. I would also like to mention briefly my own insights on strategic documents uh, gleaned from many years of international experience in, in working with higher education systems around the world and particularly in the context of university governance. So as chair of the governing authority, I want to start first by saying and remarking and, and, and thanking everyone for the consultation process, which was one of the most engaged processes that I have ever seen. Um, I know many of you today were part of it uh, through town halls, workshops, written contributions, all sorts of methods of contributing. And the members of the Governing Authority, and many of you are here today, also contributed to workshops and to the thinking behind the plan. <coughs> Universities, as we know, are places of discussion, debate, and critical thinking. And we do have a protest going on outside today, and that's part of being in a university. Um, so I think we recognize that during the process of the consultation. This is not always easy. There is always discussion and debate, but that is precisely what is valuable about an institution such as a university. And the diversity of perspectives 
allowed the uh, valiant team to re refine its vision and to develop a strategy that I believe is resilient and dynamic and designed to meet the evolving needs of our ever-growing community and also of the wider economy and society outside Manoeuvre. The development of this plan <coughs> provided an opportunity for everyone to reflect on what the purpose of a university is. Um, I talked about this earlier this year in the Academy because it's the search for truth, the expansion of human knowledge, it's fostering democratic societies, it's the education of critical minds. In the Irish context, we draw inspiration from John Henry Newman's work, The Idea of a University. And that still resonates today more than 100 years, sorry, almost 100 years after it was written. Newman argued that the primary purpose of the university is for a cultivation or enlargement of the mind. And I would go further and say it's about the free and fresh flow of ideas. And fostering that cultivation of the mind is to realize the full potential of this institution and of all who work inside the university. So my second point, what is a strategy document? Well, the strategy is a plan. It's a guiding compass on a journey to a future whose boundaries and landscapes we can, in some cases now, only dimly discern. And I mentioned two things, AI and climate change. And we're all acutely aware of the, how this can change so quickly the society around us. Without a strategy, an institution will like, lack the map to plan for that future. Nothing grows in a comfort zone, and this is especially true when grafting a strategy for the future. It is not meant to be a static document. It's a dynamic guide that challenges us to continually push those boundaries and reach new heights of excellence. The president will doubtlessly remark that this strategy also must be flexible and innovative and responsive to the changes that we know are ongoing and are coming for our society. Throughout my career, which has been more or less almost around the world, I have witnessed the transformative power of education and the profound impact that it can make on individuals and society. My experience has shown me that the most successful institution are those with clear visions, inclusive processes of consultation, and the determination will and the government support to deliver. I believe that at Minuth University we possess all these things and our positioning for success. From the point of view of the governing authority, uh, I would make the following points. Strategy and governance go hand in hand. Strategy sets the directions and the priorities. Governance, on the other hand, defines the rules responsibilities, transparency, and ethics. When these two work together, strategy becomes the map for the future and governance follows. It helps to allocate resources wisely and it turns the university's vision into action. This partnership is vital for success, ensuring every decision serves a clear purpose and leads to growth. So this strategic plan is a collective vision for the future of Minot University, and it reflects the strength, I believe, of this community. In closing, I would like to uh, acknowledge the contributions and hard work of the members of the governing authority, and we spent many hours discussing many of the issues and, and points that, that are in, in this strategy. And I want, on behalf of the governing authority, to extend my gratitude to our students, staff, alumni, and partners for all your valuable input, and to our president 
Professor Eva Leonolan for her leadership. I look forward to seeing the positive impact this plan will have on our institution and on our broader community as we move forward to the essential task of implementation. Thank you all very much. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Canning. Uh, please welcome uh, Maynooth University President, uh, Professor Eva Leinonen, who will share the vision and areas of strategic focus as outlined in the strategic plan. Ahina Ushla Agus Ahodsa, the Fulcher Rov, Huik An Kelyura, Sha, Ehula, Flan, Stratasia, Osko Wanuat. I'm still trying. <laughs> so, welcome everyone to today's celebration of Maynooth University. Today is a celebration, and uh, it's wonderful to be finally here. Secretary General, fellow presidents, members of governing authority, distinguished guests, colleagues, students, friends, and partners of Maynooth University. I am delighted to welcome you all here today. It brings me great pleasure to introduce Maynooth University's new strategic plan 2023-2028, and this is the copy that you will receive. And I will talk through it uh, in very high level, but you are still required to read it <laughs> afterwards. So during the consultation process, I heard uh, your collective ambition for Maynooth, and uh, this really resonated deeply with me as a person. I too share that ambition. My career has taken me to uh, lots of different places across the world, Europe, of course, the United Kingdom, Australia, Singapore, Hong Kong, Dubai, and now Ireland. And I was drawn to Maynooth University for lots of different reasons, but really by the creative, compassionate, and ambitious individuals who make our community and also to our very strong foundations for building future success. We all know that there's much um, uncertainty and instability in the world at the moment, and much is changing around us and requiring us to be flexible and future-focused. And at the same time, it's really exciting because creativity, innovation, and new discoveries are flourishing. So this is an opportune time to reflect on the role and significance of universities and ask profound questions about our future and our place in society. Our strategic process prompted us to con contemplate the role of Maynooth University. Who are we? What are values that define us? What are we seeking to be recognized for? Where do we want to create impact? And what characterizes what we call the Maynooth experience? Our strategic plan came about through very deep reflection and questioning. It is our commitment to thrive and, and seize new opportunities. It is a blueprint for strengthening our already strong foundations, and it is our response to the changing environment. Change is never easy, and especially in higher education. And that is one thing that my three decades as a leader in universities has taught me. Responding to change is about building on our strengths, and also, importantly, about letting go of aspects of our being that define us now, but will not serve us well into the future. Letting go is the hardest part 
of change. But critically, it lays the foundation for building something new. Now, we all face very common challenges in the sector, including funding shortages, increased competition, and expectations to do more with less. Yet we share a collective responsibility to overcome these challenges for the betterment of our students and society. So when I look around this room and meet our outstanding community members, I am inspired by the creativity and can-do attitude I see, and I'm excited about the potential we have to offer collectively. Our strategic plan is bold and forward-looking. It builds on our long history of academic and professional excellence, going back to the establishment of St. Patrick's College in 1795. Our new strategy respects our historical roots and harnesses the potential of our education and research to create positive change and also elevate Maynooth University's reputation across the world. With this strategic plan, we chart an ambitious vision for Maynooth University, one of excellence, opportunity, and impact. Our purpose, as we have already heard, is very straightforward, but it's yet very profound, to imagine and create better futures for all. And at the heart of our plan are four areas of focus that we will guide our path ahead. So one area of focus is excelling in research and creating societal impact. We will concentrate on five interdisciplinary research areas while maintaining our inclusive research approach. These areas are Digital and data, data and digital transformation, health and well-being, heritage, culture and language, society and public policy, and sustainability and climate change. So by focusing our efforts, we can build expertise and reputation and make a significant transformative impacts nationally and internationally. We know that implementation is all important, so to achieve these goals, we will invest in our people, systems, infrastructure to support research. We will establish interdisciplinary research futures institutes and drive progress in our priority areas of research. We will create a graduate research academy to nurture the future and next gener generation of researchers. We will build a dynamic and supportive research environment to foster collaboration and high quality outcomes. We will be bold in promoting our research achievements and their impact on society. And we will take a structured approach to capturing excellence and impact. As you can hear, there are many we wills in this speech because we are determined to make things happen. Let me now turn to another area of focus in our strategy, that is to advance student learning. As a university, our mandate is to advance knowledge, engage in critical dialogue, and provide high quality education for our students. Students are at the heart of our being. They are at the heart of our launch today as we've heard the singing and there's more student engagement to come. We are here to serve our community by responding to the needs of our students, by creating programs of study that meet their needs and the needs of society and that reflect modern ways of learning and living. Our commitment is to educate students in an inclusive environment in which everyone can thrive personally and intellectually, and which students have a space to understand themselves as people, engaged citizens, and independent thinkers. 
We want our graduates to be highly employable next generation innovators who are also committed to a better society and a more sustainable world. Therefore, all our students will be equipped with future-focused competencies and skills, including digital and data skills, and skills for advancing the sustain sustainability of our planet. To support student success and well-being, we will create a one-stop shop of student supports that brings together virtually and physically the many important services we provide. And we will offer more opportunities in sports, arts, and extracurricular activities. We will continue to invest in student facilities catering for our diverse student cohorts, and we are committed to providing more student accommodation. And those who are in the workplace, our plan is to provide flexible learning opportunities to advance lifelong learning. And also, our aim is to grow domestic and international student numbers, particularly, particularly in the area of postgraduate study. From my experience in Australia, I recognize the importance of strength-based education. I worked closely with indigenous Australians, both staff and students, to bring their valuable experiences to bear on their own education. And I'm proud that Maynooth University shares this approach, and I'm excited to announce our plans to create a national center of excellence for inclusive higher education. Over the course of my career, I've been involved in driving innovation, including in the field of health. While a global society, there has been much progress in advancing health over the past decades, there is a pressing need to address the challenges of aging populations, rising costs, and workforce shortages. As part of our strategic direction, Maynooth University is embarking on establishing a School of Health and Medicine, and this initiative leverages the current expertise of sciences, public policy, digital health, to name but few, to address national, uh, global, and regional workforce challenges. As an initial step, plans are underway to establish a School of Nursing. We are working in tandem, tandem with regulatory requirements. Our nursing curriculum will prioritize future-focused healthcare skills, including digital health, interprofessional learning, community care, and access to nursing for students from the FET sector. Our third area of focus is to expand internationalization. Through our research and te teaching, Maynooth University is already a university of significant international standing. Our new plan will see us develop a strategic approach to internationalization, focusing on student and staff mobility, strategic partnerships, and student recruitment. We will enhance our standing in the higher education global landscape, and we have set ourselves a lofty goal for improved performance in global university rankings. And we are already working to establish a distinguished international co collaborator program for incoming visiting scholars. And this will allow us to collaborate proactively and strategically with prominent researchers from around the world, fostering long-term research partnerships that position us to contribute to global challenges. And our final area of focus is to foster strong engagement and partnerships. Collaboration lies at the heart of our plan. We recognize that today's challenges are multifaceted and demand collective action locally, regionally, nationally. And to this end, we will establish a clear front door to the university, a new partnership office 
to facilitate engagement between the university, industry, enterprise, civic society. And we are committed to enhance our connections with the town of Maynooth and our region and sharing our campus as a place of connection and engagement. And I look forward to strengthening collaboration with other higher education institutions and seek to create new models of collaboration to extend educational opportunities to more students in our region and beyond. And our enhanced engagement extends to our remarkable local and global alumni networks, which includes Ambassador Geraldine Bernason, who has sent us a wonderful recording that will conclude today's event. A vision without the means to achieve it remains a dream. The successful execution of this plan relies on key enablers that serve as a foundation of our efforts. And these enablers include our commitment to people-first culture, robust governance, quality, and operational actions, equality, diversity, inclusion, and sustainability as underpinning all of our endeavors, and financial strength and sustainable infrastructure as critical building blocks of success. But above all, everything we do is driven by our values of integrity, collegiality, responsibility, freedom of expression, and ambition. Our values define who we are, what we believe in, and how we act as a community. Our values underpin the Maynooth experience and our future success. As I contemplate uh, the journey that lies ahead, a poem by one of our distinguished alumni, Mary O'Donnell, comes to mind. The poem entitled, Unlegendary Heroes, begins with the line, life passes through places. Walking through our magnificent campus, it is impossible not to reflect on the countless lives that have touched this institution. While some of them have gained great recognition for their achievements, many have been legendary heroes. Yet each one has played a vital role in shaping Maynooth University into what it is today. Together, we all have a part to play in the transformative journey that will define the path of our university for the next five years and beyond. Our new strategic plan, it is not just a document. It is not something for the top drawer. It is a call to action. It is an invitation to our entire community, students, staff, alumni, and partners to join us in shaping a future where Maynooth University continues to excel, innovate, and make a positive impact on society. So it is now our privilege and an obligation to build on the ambition of those that have passed through this place and to ensure that we are truly a university of excellence, opportunity, and impact. Let us now work hand in hand to make this vision a reality. Thank you, Goramile Mahagwev.
Thank you, President, uh, Dr. Canning, Dr. Reardon, for outlining the, the process and the, the key points of the plan. She needs sunri on froche, so it's bufuinti and flan strategic. I was in this close to me the Fartamalin O Micklein the Hoskola. We'll now ask some of our students, current and past, to speak with us. Uh, first, I just want to uh, ask uh, two current students, that's Sarah Lindsay Swan and Kaylee Bailey Bromley, uh, to speak with us um, about their perspectives on the strategic plan. Both are Platinum Muse Award recipients, and the Muse Awards recognize and reward student contribution to extracurricular and co curricular uh, activity. Um, uh, in, in other words, they're also typical of the experience of many of our students. Sarah is a recent BA in Sociology and Criminology and is studying for an MA in Comparative Criminology and Criminal Justice. She lives in and commutes from Roscommon Town, relatively close. Uh, Sarah is very involved with the MU Cancer Society and is the past president and current secretary. Uh, she's also chairperson of the Society's Management Committee and is a student ambassador this year. Uh, Kaylee is in her final year of her BA in English and Media and Cultural Studies, and she's living on campus. Uh, she is from Dundalk County Loud. She's a Maynooth Access Program student originally and a 1916 bursary recipient. Uh, she's president and founder of the Lego Society and is the Interest Hobby and Board of Irish College Society's rep on the Society's Management Committee. Two busy students. And a ball and fall to her with Sarah August uh, Kaylee. Well. Everybody. So my name is Kaylee. My name is Sarah. And we are both members of the Society's Management Committee. But first and foremost, we are students at Maynooth University. So we're here today to give you all a bit of an insight into not only how we as students have engaged with the strategic plan, but also as club and society members. We were asked today to give you an idea of how important clubs and societies are to the MU strategic plan. There are over 82 societies and 30 clubs at Maynooth University with over 13,000 active memberships. So there is a lot of a chunk of a community here in Maynooth at Club and Socks. The Club Society's office is now located in the Rye Building, but we'll come back to that in just a moment. So first and foremost, I want to say, studying at Maynooth University is more than just earning a qualification. At Maynooth University, students have the opportunity not, to not only gain knowledge, but to also discover their true passions and unlock their true potential. This is where clubs and societies come in. They are a key role in student development and finding your true self. The MU Strategic Plan held key transformative dialogues between staff and students to ensure this diverse and creative cohort of students were listened and responded to. Committees such as the societies and clubs management committees were also a key voice in these engagements. These voices came in many forms, such as town halls, online surveys, clubs and society forums, staff student workshops, all allowing people to open new forms of communication from ex and experiences in all walks of Maynooth University life. Exactly. Now this information was passed on to the Student Facilities Project Advisory Group. I can see several members in the crowd. And what our job was, was to review the data collected and implement that in as many ways as possible across the campus in a timely manner. So this group of people, had voices from every corner of the university. Speaking as a member myself, our goal was to make any future developments at Maynooth work for every kind of student, visitor or staff member. Whether you were able-bodied, neurodivergent, straight from the leave insert or returning to education after many years, Maynooth University should and now will feel like a home away from home. That it does. The engagement with clubs and societies members was also so important to this strategic planning as mentioned before. But students will benefit from these projects for many years to come. As the plan mentions, the approach is future focused, which means that far beyond our own graduation, future students can also benefit from these projects, while current students will develop these and use these skills in their careers and job prospects. This will also encourage students to continue their own passions and projects inspired within Maynooth. For me, it will forever be the power of community and fundraising through MU Cancer Society. And for myself, it will be the power of creativity and mindfulness with the LEGO Society. At the moment, we are all enjoying brand new facilities that are already making a huge and positive impact 
on our fellow clubs and societies, students and staff alike. And it can only go up from here. <laughs> this is thanks to the emphasis the strategic plan has on real world change for our beautiful <laughs> campus at Milling. Yes, and from this, students have not only been heard, but actually listened to. By being an active part of the conversation, needs such as eating spaces, quiet zones, and seating areas have popped up all around campus, in pre-existing buildings and in new facilities. With large developments such as the strategic plan, it can be hard to find a one-size-fits-all solution. But by incorporating actual student voices from all walks of campus life, our campus now has several multifunctional spaces where students can finally just be students. By far, the best example of this for us has to be the amazing new Clubs and Societies building over at Rye. The thought and consideration into such minute details was honestly hard to comprehend at first. The whole space has been designed to include everything we could have dreamed of, right down to the kitchen counters, which are just big enough to fit our canisters for our hot tea flasks. It sounds like a small detail, but until you have to fill one of those on your own, you won't appreciate it. <laughs> so, to wrap it up, this plan has not only changed academic lives for students, but the social ones too. These life skills developed by not only us, but all at Maynooth, will be with us forever. So we hope that by giving our own perspective on these projects today, you can get a sense of the true value of these projects when vision becomes a reality. So, from both of us, thank you all so much for listening to us, not only today, but over the course of this entire project. Thank you. Thanks very much, uh, Sarah and Kaylee, for your presentation, uh, but also for all the work you've been doing on behalf of the uh, students and uh, developing and uh, enriching the community of the university. Uh, I just want to go on now and introduce an, another of our students, uh, Edie Hand, who is a student uh, in the uh, recently launched MA in Creative Writing. And the first cohort from that uh, uh, master's will graduate shortly uh, through the Department of English. Um, nine novel drafts have emerged already from the uh, MA, and um, Edie is going to read from her uh, novel, uh, Dirt Pickers, which she wrote uh, through, the, through the Masters, and which her advisor, the novelist uh, Belinda McKeown, describes as a superb achievement and an unshakable experience for the reader. So before I ask Edie to come up, just to give you a sense of some of the context for the piece she's going to read, uh, the novel is set in the rural United States in the 1980s, uh, Dirt Pickers is the story of a small group of people, two adults and three children, who become an improvised family as they go on the run from the Idaho uh, mining community, which had long been their home but uh, became a nightmare for them. Uh, piecing together a new life in the wilderness of the far north, they have to come to terms with each, with each other and with what they've left behind. Uh, Edie's going to read an excerpt which introduces us to that family, Opal and Denny, and the children, Maud, Billy and Baby, who are not their children, but the children they must care for now, as Opal and Denny uh, try to find a place for them to hide. So uh, welcome, Edie. Thank you. Hi, thank you for having me. Um, August 1981. Finding the cabin is no small feat. Denny does so within a week of them being parked out by the abandoned quarry. Days spent trekking through dense forest, returning with little in the way of food for the children beyond some softening berries and a possum. They spit roasted over an open fire, orange heat painting their faces in the night. Maud still won't look at them. Billy still looks too much. The baby is content to lay back against a solid frame and gnaw on the hems of her dirty clothes. The mush that Opal bought in the gas station is dwindling. Soon, the rationing will have to begin, and while the children might be able to quieten the cries of their hunger pains, the baby will not. I seen it up on a ridge. Denny's voice is a gruff whisper across the flames. He pokes at the fire with a long stick scorching the end black. Ain't been used in a long time, far as I can tell. Windows are covered in shit. 
It's a hunting cabin, so he says, not the kind that anybody would live in for long periods of time. Season don't start till September, even late around these parts. Opal wonders how he'd even know. It's not like Denny was renowned for venturing beyond the valley's bounds. It often seemed more likely that he had lived there his entire life. But there are ways he goes about things that don't fit quite right. It's his accent, for one. Nothing like his father's at all. Instead, a botched culmination of sounds from all over. At times, when his attempts at gentleness are clear and endearing, there is a touch of yank to his cadence. Yet the old man they encountered down in Bonner's Ferry reckoned Denny was a citizen of Mississippi. As far north as here, he sticks out like a sore thumb. Have you ever been anywhere else, she asks him, while he stokes the fire, while the children sleep. His shadow stretches, long and leering across once compact dirt that has since been loosened by the elements. His chin dips to his chest and he keeps it there. She takes this as confirmation. Reckon I've been lots of places, he eventually says. Just can't remember. Which is a lie, it must be, because Opal can recall every single place she has ever set foot. From LaSalle Street Station to the Buckingham Fountain, Minnesota Fabrics to Vaughn's on Northwest Avenue. She could map out the world inside her own mind as a large and winding tree, branches intersecting, tangling, cutting off at abrupt ends. The cabin is nothing like she's ever seen. It stands, rigid and rooted to the ground like a jagged boulder, the open maw of a cave that has been eroding under the brutal hands of the elements, no human touch for centuries. It is a scab on the landscape, jarring and altogether unwelcome. For Denny, there is a quality to it that lingers unpleasantly in the pit of the stomach, like swallowing the stone of a plum. He can no longer remember what it feels like to be home. The cord has been severed and he is unmoored. Perhaps this cabin is the only point of focus, a rock he can swim toward, or a stepping stone at least to somewhere better. The rain creates a din of green, brown, blue noises, black in the shadows and the burrows, cavities carved by woodpeckers and kept by yellow-eyed owls. The boy is standing with his head tipped back, sandy hair painted mahogany against the dirty pallor of his forehead. His tongue is unfurled all the way down to the dimple of his chin, a shock of pink against the emerald expanse of trees. Billy is catching fat drops of rain and swallowing them inside puffed cheeks. Opal wraps a ratty sleeve around the palm of her hand and wipes at the boy's face as the baby holds fast to her chest. But with clothes more water than fabric, Opal's efforts are futile, his owner faring no better. They cannot get these children dry. Maud, with her gaunt cheeks and wiry frame, shivers in the souvenir sweater they bought her at a strip mall just beyond the border. Billy got one too, but he threw up on it. The boy's freezing, with a thin sheet of a jacket dragging behind him like a cape. Denny grabs his hand, milk teeth clatter as Billy's mouth snaps shut. Later, the rain will stop. They will throw onions on the fire and peel apart their blackened layers. They will use old newspapers and almanacs as kindling and curl around the hearth in lonesome little heaps. The baby, with her name hidden in his heart, cradled under his borrowed shirt, skin to skin for warmth, snoring soundly at his sternum. Later, a woman in rain boots and woolen stockings that sag around her kneecaps will march up the drive and threaten them at gunpoint. But she will see the baby and the boy. She will see a waif of a girl with a gun perched on the porch railing, and she will reconsider. It was her late husband's cabin, she'll tell them, and they'd better treat it right. Half of their hunt and a third of what they grow. Better be married, best have no more babies on the way. They best not take any of this for granted because it's a blessing from the Lord above. Tell her nothing of their situation because she does not want to know, which is another blessing because there are some things that can never be spoken aloud. Thank you, Edie, for...
terrific piece of writing and beautifully uh, read also. Um, and to all the students really for giving us a sense of, I suppose, the work that, that we can do to help students, but also the privilege it is for us as some of us get older and older to get to work with new generations who bring that energy and yeah, youthful uh, spirit. Um, so just, uh, I suppose, our, our last presentation is building on the, that international perspective of our current and future university. We'll hear a short recorded video from one of our esteemed alumni mentioned earlier. It's a presentation by Ambassador Geraldine Byrne Nason, Ireland's ambassador to, to the United States. And the presentation will provide a broader perspective on the plans, themes, and potential impact. Hello, I'm Geraldine Byrne Nason, bringing greetings from Washington, DC, where I'm serving as Ireland's 19th ambassador to the United States of America, a role I assumed one year ago now, following five years as Ireland's ambassador at the United Nations in New York. I was made in Maynooth, and I couldn't be happier than to speak today at the launch of the Maynooth University five-year strategic plan. The first plan, I might add, by a woman, president of Maynooth, uh, Professor Ava Leinanen. As a Maynooth University alumna of over 40 years standing, I believe that I can say with some authority that Maynooth University is a place where authentic, lasting connections are made. I speak to you today as one who has carried those connections across the globe for over four decades and in whom a deep loyalty and pride in Maynooth still resides. The more than 100,000 Maynooth alumni around the world are also passionate advocates for Maynooth University and have a great ambition for our collective future. I like to think that those alumni embody the transformative nature of a Maynooth education, and they also signal a willingness to help today's students transition successfully beyond graduation, helping to shape their communities and their chosen sectors in line with MU values. The strategic plan indicates that this is a consequential time to leverage that support. I see from the plan that we're asserting that, and I quote, we have a, an ambitious, flexible and innovative mindset when seeking opportunities and responding to challenges. From my perspective, I can't emphasize enough the importance of such forward thinking in the context of a dynamic global higher education system. We're living in very uncertain times on the global stage. Tectonic plates are shifting. We need a highly educated, flexible group of thinkers to negotiate our future. We also need to continue building on the past to be Ireland's university of excellence, opportunity and impact. As we do that, we should also focus on meeting our national needs. I'm impressed that this strategy includes establishing a new school of health and medicine to support new models of health workforce development. The plan also looks for our trademark excellence in leading on global challenges such as climate change and also demonstrating leadership in inclusion in higher education through a center of excellence for inclusive higher education. Now, although my own days in Maynooth were not especially marked by attention to internationalization, I want to encourage MU to think globally. The plan sets out the objective of enhancing opportunities for all our students and staff to think and engage globally, signaling our own commitment to world-class internationally informed education and research. Ireland is a global island. Today, there are no issues that are entirely domestic nor wholly foreign. We need to educate the next generation as the global Irish generation. That means working to internationalize our student population and our campus. It will mean expanding and diversifying our international strategic partnerships and facilitating international opportunities for all, just as set out in the strategic plan. Now, I know well that strategies can sometimes seem impossible to attain. The noble purpose of the strategy meets reality all too soon. This plan sets the bar high, 
nothing less than to imagine and create better futures for all. As one who came to Maynooth first in 1977 from small town Drogheda with great expectations and frankly little else, I can attest to keeping that noble purpose in view. We all have a role to play in realising this strategy. 60 years ago, John F. Kennedy, President of the US, visited these shores and he knew of an extraordinary ambition for Ireland, setting it out as an everyday task. He said, everyone can make a difference and everyone should try. This strategic plan is a great place to start. Seems like an appropriate note to begin to draw uh, matters to a close. Um, before I just go into the last section, I'd like to thank everybody involved in organising the event today. Um, the event itself, uh, I haven't seen it from the inside for maybe the first time, it takes, takes a huge amount of work by the organisers and coordinators, and I won't start to name people, but a, a huge amount of work has gone into it, and also by the many, many uh, departments and campus services and other um, service departments and workers who um, have put a lot of largely invisible labour into, into the event. Um, so, Gramil Malgov. Uh, overall, I think today marks the start of an important new chapter in the history of Maynooth University, guided by the strategic plan for 2023 to 2028. The plan presents a collective vision for the university and, the, and its future. And the president mentioned that it's a flexible, uh, dynamic entity. Um, and the process of kind of interpretation and understanding and implementation and the realization of the goals is already underway. Uh, the success of the plan and the university hinges on dialogue and collaboration and today's event is a testament to the power of coming together to, in the words of the plan, imagine and create better futures for all. Tomidic Sul, Gamesh Galer, Portax and Uber, Kunan Fisha, Hurt Kuntarava, Sail and Holskala. I can say in our blay lesson sale more hymn learning. Um, we were going to finish with a, a, a final performance. Uh, I do want to say there's refreshments available outside, not to forget the spur uh, presentation. You're all very welcome to join us with colleagues and friends outside. And our final act, and uh, leave the final word to um, our performers, a joint project of Maynooth University traditional group in the Department of Music, led by Ashley Nikristela, and professional Irish dancer Morgan Bullock, who is a first year media studies student here uh, at Maynooth University. So we'll let the performers uh, file on and get it arranged and uh, enjoy Agus Gurumil Mahabit.
for a male, male mongo, that was fantastic. And uh, that concludes the uh, official proceedings. Could we just ask you to exit from the top and then to work your way down from there? <laughs> OK. Thank you very much. Thanks very much. If anybody has come across a pair of reading glasses,